Appalachian Mountains. It's gorgeous. So this is the picnic table at the Chatfield Knob Shelter. And there is the shelter. It's a nice fully enclosed shelter. So completely, completely out of this wind. There a plunger in a privy. So this is what the inside of the chestnut knob shelter looks like. There's a bunk here, large open space. They have my pack king in there. Uh, there's some space there. I have my I can close in my bunk right here. And here's what I wrote in the journal today. There we go. It's focused. <laughs> I didn't find any nickels as a reference to. My friend Nichols. I hope he reads it. I'm sure he will. Um, but uh, yeah, that night hike last night, it was so starry, wonderful, once it got into the meadows, but then the meadows stretched on and on and on. Um, but I appreciated the fact that it was starry and beautiful, and those night skies were amazing. So thank you for that gift. Uh, of the starry skies, whoever was responsible for it. Um, the climb was hard. The climb was steep initially, and then after I got to the meadows, it just kept going and going and going. I stopped for one rest break in the night, at which I looked up at the stars and was like, wow, I'm so thankful to be here. So I would not I would not have had that experience had I not night hiked up here. And then I saw a little bit of a sunrise this morning, even amid the clouds, which I also would not have had if I had not like, hiked up here. And this shelter is so worth staying at. So I'm glad I got here and uh, got some rest. The sun came up a little bit ago and uh, I am still here. Haven't packed up yet. Figured I'd eat a little something and take a little bit of a slower morning. It's only like 7.30, so not very slow yet. Um, and then maybe get out by 8 or 8.15 today. This is a weather shelter in here too. That's cool. What am I eating? Probably eat this apple, some candy I got yesterday, probably pop tarts, some crackers, um, maybe a cliff, and uh, maybe a thing new. So I had thought about getting rid of my sleep clothes to try to let in my pack and less bulkify my pack a little bit more, but it was really nice having sleep clothes last night that I changed into. I haven't changed into them every night recently. Um, but uh, my clothes were a bit wet from going up the mountain and uh, it was really nice to have a dry pair of clothes to turn, change into. I think it's very important to always have at least one pair of dry clothes that you can keep dry so that you can have a comfortable night's sleep after a long day. So that's where we came from last night to the shelter. There is the amazing view of the mountains. Here is a trail northbound. It is windy. Hey y'all, guess who? That's right, it is Stick the Eagle here, Stick on Trail. And we are heading northbound from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Mount Katahdin, Maine. Today is day 39 and uh, we're still heading north. We're getting a late start today because I took some time. I had service today, so I was looking up some weather this morning. Last night, I'll admit, when I got in, it was like 10.30. Super, super late uh, after night hiking. Uh, if you want to know what led to that, watch yesterday's video. But uh, it just involved a little breakfast, Easter breakfast by Fresh Ground, and then Easter dinner at the uh, Bear Garden Hostel, which was very, very nice. Um, and I'm glad I took both those opportunities. But then I felt like I had the energy, so I pushed. And this morning I was feeling a little bit low energy when I woke up, so I decided to slow down. Uh, just uh, go with what your body is telling you. If uh, your body's like, hey, give me a little bit of time like it was this morning, I'm like, okay, I'll give you a little bit of time. I'm just hiking my own hike. I'm not gonna worry about keeping up with anybody or even keeping up with myself because uh, 
my own pace schedule and my own goals sometimes say, hey, you should be hiking, you need to cover miles, but then I say, nope. <laughs> I, I don't need to focus only on covering miles, I need to listen to my body, listen to myself, and give myself a couple hours rest when I need to. So this morning I used some time to uh, just relax, I wrote in the journal a uh, longer message, which uh, I'll post here if I didn't post already, and uh, I also just uh, read some comments and responded to some of your all's comments since I had some service, looked up the weather. Um, weather's supposed to be okay today, chance of, small chance of showers, about 30%, and uh, tomorrow night it's supposed to rain a lot, so it'd be nice to be in a hostel tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> I'm at mile 570 right now, and uh, the next hostels are like, well, there's, there's hostels all over the place. The next hostels I would consider stopping at would be at like 610 or 625, Weary Feet and Woods Hole. Woods Hole is like a must stop. So we'll play it by ear. Still expecting snow for Thursday, so it's gonna be cold. But it's a high of like 70. The only reason I have my rain jacket on right now is because it's windy and the wind is a little bit cold. Um, and uh, it might shower too, we'll see. We'll see. Um, about my family, my friends that I made in North Carolina, they're all behind me. I sailed past them yesterday. Uh, they were spending Easter in Atkins. Uh, and then uh, I ended uh, about, well, 570. So about 20 miles past that last night. So I'm like 20 miles ahead of them, but that's okay. I'm just gonna hike my hike. And uh, if there's people with me, then great. If there's not, then uh, I know you're all with me and God's with me. And uh, now I've got audiobooks with me too. And, um, I'm going to be looking for more suggestions, but until then, I'll just uh, repeat Early Riser's book on Nobo if I have to, because there's a lot of good points there. So, let's keep on trucking northbound. I suck at hiking, or Master Splinter came up to the shelter while uh, I was sitting and eating breakfast, so I'll probably appear in his video there. This is from the trail on the way down. You know, I'm tired this morning, I can't stop yawning. Might not be getting enough sleep. I did sleep well last night though. Um, once I got to bed, I didn't even stay up and edit my video from yesterday, so I haven't done that yet. Um, but I went straight to bed, like 11 o'clock, and woke up at seven just before sunrise. So I slept a good eight hours, and I don't think I woke up once. Berg's Garden Hostel, that's cool. It's time to find the water source and fill up on water. Blue blazes leading down this road to the water. Isn't that nice? Nice, nice. I needed this right now. Sinak, here we come. Here we go, filtering water with my Sinak again. There wasn't any water up at the shelter, so. It's nice to get water here, and I'm going to drink a lot right here. Just finished filling up some of my water, and I'm eating a candy bar for some refuel, because I'm tired, y'all. I feel tired. It's April 1st, and uh, it's been a good journey, and uh, I'm going home. Let that sink in for a minute. I am going home because... Connecticut and the Appalachian Trail are kind of my home. I feel home now. I feel more at home. So I feel like I'm going home to a place where I should be mentally and uh, physically. Like I'm starting to feel more at home. 
and I'm going to my, I'm walking to my home in Connecticut. So, I feel more at peace even though I am tired, but I feel like I should also be recognizing that I'm tired and not push 25s every single day if I'm not feeling it. But today's supposed to be no rain, so I'm gonna push as much as I can. And then maybe the next couple days where it's not so great weather, I might uh, go into a hostel, take some time for myself, and just enjoy life, embrace the journey. Look at these blue flowers and this red bug that landed on my pack. Listen to the birds at this parking area. This is why I'm feeling at home. But I had to do something on April 1st, you know. <laughs> and it works. I feel more at home. I honestly just feel so comfortable being out here right now. I'm loving the wild. Loving the trail. Loving the days and the people I meet along the way. Yeah. I love it out here. Looks like they had a little fire here with all the blackened trees. Great view of Chestnut Knob right there. The view out here. And uh, I'm estimating we're gonna go over whatever that is in a minute. All right, here's the plan. I'm still wearing my rain jacket because it's a little windy and uh, chilly, but it should be warming up nicely. So I'm thinking, unless I'm heading, I should be heading downhill though. So it should be a little comfortable. If I was heading uphill, I couldn't be wearing it. But anyway, here is the plan. I was feeling a little bit weary today. I'm gonna change the angle so you can see me well. I'm not sure if the sun. I was feeling a bit weary today and craving more like good food and um, I have plenty of food, but I feel like I need to take a little bit of a mental break. I feel great, but um, I'm gonna push today because the weather's supposed to be nice today. And then I made a reservation. I was originally thinking of skipping weary feet to try to make up some miles and push to Woods Hole for tomorrow night. But I'm not excited about the over an inch of rain forecasted for tomorrow night and uh, Woods Hole offers dinner, and I would not make it in time for dinner if I pushed for tomorrow night. So, I want to get the full experience, full trail experience, and uh, enjoy some of the community. So I'm not gonna skip Weary Feet. I'm gonna stay at Weary Feet tomorrow. They also offer dinner and breakfast. And uh, then I'm gonna stay at Woods Hole on uh, Wednesday night. Today is Monday, by the way, April 1st. And, uh, they also offer dinner and breakfast, so that should be really nice, a uh, really nice spot, uh, spaces to stay, two back-to-back 15-mile -back days. Uh, I'm going to do 20-plus today to push as far as I can, so I have less to do to get into Woods Hole, so I, or uh, Weary Feet tomorrow, so that I make it for dinner. But it should be nice staying in a few of these hostels, meeting some people, getting some more stamps from my book, and experiencing, experiencing some of the trail community. And I think two 15 mile days will reset me very nicely. I'm still not sure I want to take a zero zero, but uh, lighter days do help me uh, feel like I've refreshed physically my body and giving myself an opportunity to recover a little bit. So it'll be four, the past four days, including today, will be 20 plus mile days and then two 15s. And then we'll see what happens after that. Um, influencers, like I said, are the rain tomorrow night and snow Wednesday night. So not sure I want to quite be out on trail uh, in the shelter when it's snowing, especially if it might be blowing snow. I don't know what kind of storm I might be expecting, but uh, we'll see. Um, we're going to take it easy the next couple days and then head out from there and then uh, make a plan. So I made a plan through Wednesday night and uh, we'll see what it's doing Thursday. When you look at the map and say, 
that looks pretty flat. I should be able to make miles real fast that day. And then you're actually reached a day and it's like, this is a climb. It's really just a whole bunch of little climbs and then little descents. So on the map, it looks flat. But when you're doing a whole bunch of, you know, little up, down, up, down, up, down, it's almost like you're doing one big hill anyway. So flat, you make great time. <laughs> up, down, up, down, flat, not so much. But you know, it is what it is. We enjoy it out here anyway. I might tent tonight. I don't want to walk into a shelter after dark again. I don't want to interrupt anybody else who might be sleeping, especially if it's going to be like way after dark. So I'm going to consider tenting. Because mile 594 is still 20 miles away and it's 1130. So I might be fast if the trail gets easier, but uh, I don't want to count on it. So I'll just see how the day goes. But I'm going to be open to finding a tent spot be, uh, like seven o'clock before the sun sets and set up um, and see where I'm at there. All right, first dandelions I've seen this year. All right, y'all, I'm gonna stop for lunch. And let me tell you, these are something I'd really love to resupply on more. Pro Bar Meals on the go. They make a variety of flavors, have plenty of protein, and they're so tasty. I think I had a chocolate chip one or something the other day. Um, this one I stuck at hiking, Master Splinter gave to me because he had extras, so thank you. 12 o'clock tip for today, it doesn't matter how far you go, just take steps there. Just take steps to get there. Put one foot in front of another. There doesn't always have to be walking on a hiking trail. Sometimes it can be as simple as a process you have to do, and there's a lot of steps you have to do to get there. Just complete one today. Like when I'm going to Katahdin, I could think about, oh, get just get to Katahdin, just get to Katahdin, or I can give myself steps along the way to get there. Like, I'm going to get to this shelter, or I'm going to get to this hostel or campsite or something like that. You can do the same thing in your life. Make a step that's achievable in a day. Do that today, and now you're getting somewhere. I stopped for lunch for a half hour. I was at Chestnut for a while this morning, and I've only seen the two people. Mo, who was at the shelter and left early in the morning and uh, Master Splinter and of course Leo. I think we're getting a lot sparser out here and or I'm ahead of the bubble. At this point we're just pushing north. My elephant's like you've only gone like six miles today what are you doing you're getting behind schedule but my rider is like we called the hostels, we made a plan to rest a little bit, have some good meals coming. Elephants, yeah, oh yeah, well, I guess I like that. <laughs> so we're good. We're just gonna walk today with a promise for nice hostels and good meals tomorrow night. So even if it rains a little bit, we're gonna get as far as we can get today. And it's flattened out pretty nicely. And, uh, then we'll go the rest of the way tomorrow. Sometimes when I'm walking by a white blade, I just like to touch it and be thankful that I can do that because I'm here in the Appalachian Trail. When they say this is flat land, this is what they mean. <laughs> nice rocky trail. There is no such thing as an easy day on the Appalachian Trail, unless you're taking a zero. And that's why it's especially important to prepare yourself mentally for this hike before and also while you're on it because you can't prepare everything before the hike. You also have to prepare on a hike um, by having, I don't know, some plan in place like audiobooks or something to give yourself motivation while you walk. Pump yourself up. Tell you you can do it because I can see how some people say it's monotonous after a while but in my opinion, it's less monotonous than day-to-day -day life in the workforce. Actually, to give it justice, it's beautiful out here. So many great views, so many great people, and I love living out here. Virginia 623, high on Garden Mountain. There's a little campsite over there. 
most of all, I hear there's a trash can and look, even a water cache. I lied, it's not a trash can, but that's okay. And the water cache is empty also, but um, that's okay. I have water. Virginia's got a few rocks. Hey, by the way, I probably could be an early riser, but I'm trying not to set alarms out here. I'm trying to just let my body wake up naturally when it feels like it should wake up rather than tell my body to wake up at a certain time. I feel like that is one other way that I'm able to escape the matrix is just allowing a completely natural wake up cycle. Davis Farm Camps, I understand that goes like way downhill. Wow, look over there at the mountains. Awesome. I think we're finally leaving the ridge line and going down the hill towards the Jenkins Shelter. That makes me feel good. Jenkins Shelter's at mile 580, which is at the uh, 10 mile mark. It's already almost two o'clock. So I'm going slow, but I started late, so it's okay. But I'm definitely taking a little break. Probably 15, 20 minutes at that shelter when I get there. So ultimately when I reach the shelter, I'll have 30 miles to go to Weary Feet for tomorrow. So however I split that up over the remainder of today and tomorrow is okay. So I figure I'll just hike till sundown, set up my tent somewhere, because I don't think I'm gonna get all the way to 594, that shelter that starts with an H, um, but we'll see. I'm craving Skittles and like M&Ms or something. I still have a few Snickers bars left, but I don't have any trail mix left. And uh, I've found that you kind of have to go to grocery stores to get trail mix. Hostels don't have like bags of trail mix for whatever reason. So I might be without trail mix for a little while, but hostels do have cliff bars and protein bars and things like that, which I did pick up at the hostel I visited yesterday. So I do have a supply of that for the time being, but I'm craving candy. We've been switching back down this mountainside. We're going all the way down. Honestly, this feels like the slowest 10 miles I've ever done. You know what? The speed with which you do the Appalachian Trail doesn't really matter. You're only competing against yourself and I've never stacked this many miles on top of one another before in my life. So, I'd say I'm doing pretty well. I'm thinking instead of just hiking deep into the night to cover miles that I had planned for today, like I did last night, I'm just gonna sit up, camp, wherever I'm at at 7 or 7.30 before it gets dark and uh, just start maybe before the sun gets up and start early, depending on how many miles I have to do into weary feet tomorrow. I think that sounds like a good plan. Start the new day early and I'll feel pretty good about that. There was just a butterfly in this section. It was sitting on a rock and I came up and it flew northbound and sat on another rock. And then I came up again and it flew northbound and sat on another rock. That cycle happened like five times before it finally threw what flew off into the woods. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm walking this way. I don't mean to keep disturbing the rock you keep finding. Ah, oh, it's amusing. There's no such thing as an easy day when you backpack on the trail. There's no such thing as an easy day when you walk these endless miles. I know some of you like singing, I know some of you don't like singing, but sometimes singing is how I pick myself up. So singing I share with you because it's part of my day. Let me say a word on expectations. I think today was the slowest 10 miles that I've done, at least it felt that way because I expected 
these last 10 miles to be easy. I saw flat ridgeline walk and then downhill to this shelter. So I expected that this walk would be easy and fast. Because I expected that, it's felt so much longer. Does that make sense? So don't set expectations. Instead, just go for the walk and go with the flow and see what happens. You can certainly set goals, but be careful with expectations. And by the way, those goals should be soft goals. They should be goals that you can be flexible in, change if things don't go the way you expect. Otherwise, you'll just be down on yourself the whole hike because things aren't going the way you expect and you're not living up to your own expectations for yourself. So I made today hard by writing expectations in. Next time, I'll just say I'm gonna go out and hike. It's because my elephant's like, you aren't living up to the expectation. You aren't going fast enough. You aren't covering 10 miles by 12 o'clock. What's going on? Well, sometimes we're just out here to hike and that needs to be the purpose. I can't set an expectation before I go out and hike. I just need to go out and hike and let things happen as they're gonna happen, you know? So let's enjoy it out here because it's amazing out here. Next shelter north is 14. Hopefully it's an easier 14 than that last 11. This is the uh, Jenkins shelter. Look at this little podium for the register. I've never seen something like that in a shelter before. <laughs> There's mine. So it's after 4.30. It's almost tempting to stop here and just get up at midnight and hike, but nope, not going to happen because there is still three hours of daylight. Uh, I was talking to Mo, and she had talked to Master Splinter, I second hiking, and uh, she said that I wasn't the only one who thought that it was very difficult to get my rhythm going uh, on that last 10 miles because it was very rocky and the little tiny ups and downs. So it was difficult to get momentum. I was not the only one to think that. And I read in the journals, I was also not the only one to think that. So that is a little encouraging and hopefully it'll be a little easier from here on out for the rest of the day. At this point, I'm not sure how much farther I'll be going. Uh, it's a play it by your thing. More night hiking in the forecast? Possibly. If I decide to push 14 and hike seven hours until 11 o'clock at night and make a 16 mile a day tomorrow and then just <laughs> relax at the hostel, that seemed a little crazy, but I have the reservation for the hostel now and I've got 30 miles to cover from this point and it's already 4.30 and it's tomorrow night. So, mm. <laughs> gotta get there somehow. Um, but I've only got a 15 mile a day plan for the day after to push on to Woods Hole and maybe I'll slow down a little bit after that and see if my friends catch up. Cause uh, I don't think my body is gonna like just taking, like just like sending it every single day, 25 miles. I did refuel with some dinner here, so I had the chicken alfredo with broccoli. Uh, so that gave me some calories, so I feel strong to push on. I have some snacks and sour skittles in my hip belt, which might get me to the evening. Also, I forgot about these Cadbury cream eggs I have from yesterday, Easter. That's a nice little bridge. Actually looks like reused climbing rope. I'm a climbing director, so I recognize that. I'm not night hiking, y'all. I'm exhausted for some reason after a 10 mile day. I don't want to hike late again. So I'm going to hike two hours till it starts to get dark. Mo is inspiring me with some PCT stories over at the shelter today. It's actually hot, especially doing climbs. My thermometer is currently reading 77 degrees here at 5 p.m. Does that look steep? It's steep. So that right there is the ridge line that we were just on, then we came down and now we're coming up here. There's the river, the, uh, river valley down there. My question is, why do we have to go up and over this mountain just to go right back down to the same river valley? Just to make us work harder, I guess. Exercise. Now we're going down the other side. 
by the way, after Mount Rogers Recreation Area is over, there are no more bear boxes here in Virginia. So, another benefit of having the bear canister, I don't have to worry about the bear hang. Now we're talking. Now I can finally get my momentum going. There's less rocks around, and this trail is so much nicer. I'm glad I ate my dinner back at the shelter too, because that gives me energy, and then I don't have to worry about cooking. When I stop, I can just collapse. But nothing like getting momentum going at like 5.30 p.m., right? This is the type of ridge walk I was quote unquote expecting before for the easy 10 mile stretch. And it wasn't like this at all. But that's okay. There are so many things that don't go as expected on the Appalachian Trail. Which is why, as I said earlier, why not just do away with expectations and just walk? I'd love this to close the day. I'm able to make some, hopefully, good miles in the last two or three hours of the day and feel good about my day when I was feeling sluggish and slow in that first 10 miles. I never actually plugged in my audiobook today. Um, I've been more reflecting on what I heard yesterday in the audiobook because I listened to like the first six chapters of the book by Early Riser on uh, Pushing North. So today was a reflection on what I heard yesterday. Um, the expectations was from that uh, rider and the elephant and things. So probably put it back in tomorrow. But uh, I didn't feel like lonely. I felt the good kind of solitude. Still, even though I, I wasn't feeling good about the progress, it still wasn't the bad kind of solitude. So didn't feel like I needed that extra company today, but I will. I will. Now we're going down in a very nicely graded trail. Nice bridge. This is a nice camping spot, but I still have an hour of daylight. It's just past Laurel Creek. I'm at mile 685 now, so 15 in the day. I did five miles in an hour and a half on that nice, easy grade. What a difference the grade of trail makes with the distance you cover. I'm really impressed. This is almost tempting because this campsite has a picnic table. All right, y'all, so not only was I did I make the decision to stop at this place with the picnic table, but I set up this tent in 10 minutes. It was a very, very quick setup. And as it is seven o'clock now, it was 6.50 when I stopped, uh, I could have trudged up the next hill looking for a stealth spot or hoping to make the remaining nine and a half miles of the next shelter in the dark, night hiking again to be like, arrive at like 11 o'clock again just like I did last night well it was like 10 30 last night but still it was late so instead of doing that I made the smart decision to set up here before it gets dark and we're only about a half hour away from sunset it'll be dark dark by eight so I've got an hour to lay out my stuff and maybe edit videos and call it an early night and then maybe I'll start before dark or before light in the morning um I have to calculate how much miles I have to do tomorrow to get to weary feet. I just learned that there's this place called the Brushy Mountain Outpost, which opens at 7 a.m. for breakfast. The trail goes right by it. It's six and a half miles away from here. So it's probably about three hours of hiking. I did just look at far out and see that the next six miles is all like ridge line. It goes up, swim switchbacks, and then ridge line walking. There's no guarantee I'd find a tent site there. So I might have been stuck in the dark. And once I'm in the dark, it's hard to find a tent site and or to set up the tent. So I probably would have just pushed on to the shelter if I didn't stop here. So this was a smart decision. And now I could potentially hit the Brush Mountain Outpost 
in the morning, it opens at 7 a.m. Even if I leave at like five, I'll be there between 7.30 and eight, and that'll be just perfect. Denny Knob Shelter is 18 miles from here. The Hawk Hills or whatever is like nine. And uh, the Weary Feet Hostel is 24.8 miles from here. So long day, but I've done 24.8 before and uh, I can do it again. If I am disciplined and get myself up at five o'clock since I'm going to bed earlier tonight, then I can pack up, be on trail between five and 5.30, probably, hopefully, as long as it's not raining and doesn't like mess with my will to get up. And uh, if I get that early start, I should be able to make dinner at six, no problem. I'm working on uh, unpacking my stuff here, and uh, I'm just having the thought here that uh, I keep my bear canner store on top so I can easily access it during the day, and my puffy. Um, I pushed on past the first campsite, and then I saw the second campsite, so if the second campsite hadn't tempted me with this table, I would have pushed on. But I'm glad I didn't. I made the smart choice today. I just blew up my Sea to Summit pad and the liner, which I'm going to put in this tent. I wanted to thank Jamie again for this Gossamer Gear The One tent. This is very nice, has this little vestibule right in here for my pack to keep it dry in case of the event of rain. And it has this nice space in here for me during the night. But I think I'm going to utilize this table while I edit videos since nobody else is here at all. I have yesterday's video and today's to edit tonight because, uh, I got in so late last night that I just fell right asleep. I was just uh, uncompressing my sleeping bag here. And uh, I'm just thinking like, it feels like a summer evening tonight. Like it's so warm, it's like 70 degrees, uh, have the flow of water and there's nobody here, which is odd for a summer evening, but it's not a summer evening. Uh, and we're pre-bubble, which is nice. So I'm not fighting for any tent space or shelter space or wherever I might be like they are back in Georgia right now. Once I unroll my sleeping bag, I can take off my shoes and socks. Uh, usually I set the sleeping bag up first and the everything, the sleeping pad and everything. In this case, I set the tent up first because then I can put on my sleep socks or my camp socks and my camp shoes right now, which is what I'm doing. And then I'll probably change out of my hiking clothes. If you do want to set check out the whole explanation of my evening and morning routine. I encourage you to check out the videos by that topic that are only two to three minutes long. I'm sitting here reflecting if my tent did happen to get wet again, if it rained unexpectedly overnight. It is supposed to rain tomorrow late afternoon, but not really overnight, I don't think. But if it were to get unexpectedly wet, instead of putting it just as is in my side pocket, which got my whole pack wet last time, and I had to dry it out at the uh, Laughing Heart Hostel. I think it was Laughing Heart, yeah, in Hot Springs, uh, and take extra time out of my hiking day for that. I'm going to put it, I hope it would fit in like a gallon Ziploc bag, or if that doesn't work, I have my clothing dry bag, which I could possibly use, um, but just some sort of bag to have extra insulation uh, to protect the wet contents from getting everything else wet. Even though I do keep it on the outside of the pack, it was so soaked last time that it soaked through my pack material. That was when we had a thunderstorm at Lemon Gap, by the way. Now that my camp shoes are on, I'm going to go down here with my CNOC to uh, filter some water or, or get some water and then I'll filter it. And this is the perfect spot to filter some water or get some water that'll fill up in no time. Right next to this campsite right here. All right, y'all, I'm all set for the night. I filtered my water. I have three smart water bottles right here. One of them goes in my water bottle, water bottle holder that I can always access in the front. Um, one of them, the tall one, the one liter one. These are, the small ones are 700 liters. This one's a one liter one. And uh, the one liter will go on the side of my pack as my extra water in case I use all this water before the next water source. And the third one is, they're all full right now, but 
I usually only carry these two full at one time. This one's usually empty, but uh, I like having it full in the nighttime so that I can drink all or most of it in the morning before I start hiking so that I'm hydrated when I start my day. I don't want to drink too much now because I don't want to get up during the night too often. Um, so I'm going to save this one for the morning. So I also just uh, chatted with Mo for a while. She passed by. Uh, she's actually come going up a little bit farther, but uh, that was nice. Did not want to say hi in the blog, but that's okay. She's maybe later. Um, but we were having great conversations about the AT, PCT, CDT, because she's a triple crowner. She's done, done them all, and now she's doing the AT again, which is really, really cool. So I'm learning a lot about that. But we are here in the AT, which I've said is a great trail for starting out your journey, because I've been able to make so many changes, and it's all been easy to do here in the AT, because we're going through so many towns, and there's so much support here. If you'd like to continue to follow along on my AT journey please be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification button if you'd like to be notified when I post future videos. But it's always going to be at three o'clock, so you already know when to go check. Um, and uh, if you'd like to follow along for some more live content, be sure to follow me on Instagram with the same handle, at Stick the Eagle. For now, it is eight o'clock, and I'm planning an early start in the morning, probably some night hiking to start the day tomorrow, because I have a 24.8 day to get into dinner and the hostel and the bed. So I'm going to enjoy that for now. Remember to embrace the journey and always happy trails.